Okay, hello everyone. Welcome back to my February wrap up or recap or whatever you want to call it. I started, this is the second one, I started doing this in January of this year and I think it's just a nice little way to recap the month. So pretty much what I go through is what I bought. If you didn't know, I'm on a kind of low buy. I basically just have like a set of rules where I can only make three extra non-replacement makeup purchases throughout the month and then what I bought in terms of replacements, what I tried for the first time this month and what I've been, you know, trying. Maybe it's something that I bought in the past month that I just kind of got around to trying for the first time this month or whatever and then what I've been loving. I also go through the books that I've read this month because it's fun to for me I don't know so I thought it's fun for me to know what other people read so I thought I'd include that and I also include what tempted me to buy this month so I think that it's gonna be longer than I initially anticipated so let's just get into it so makeup purchases I did end up using all three it came in down to the wire but I uh, I did I did make three makeup purchases. So the first one was the Beauty Bay Love Notes palette. I did a video on this, a first impressions. I will link it down below if you want to check it out. Um, I went back and forth on whether I wanted to actually buy this and I ended up buying it just because I was curious to see how it was going to look IRL and my thoughts are that I like the shimmers. The mattes are generally too light. Um, this would definitely not be a standalone palette for me. Um, so a little bit disappointing. This is also something that I newly tried this month. Um, and then my two other purchases that I made, um, haven't arrived to me yet. So the second purchase that I made was, yes, I did buy the Odin's Eye Hella palette in collaboration with Angelica Nikivist. I'm very excited. I'm very excited. Oh shit. And I also bought the Norns palette when I um, made that order as well. So those two are in the mail to me. Hopefully soon you will see a first impressions on those two palettes. And I also bought, take a guess, what did I buy? I bought it yesterday. So February 28th, last day of the month, I bought the new Beauty Bay palettes that released. I know. I just couldn't not. <laughs> Which is a horrible excuse. But anyway. So who knows when those will get to me. It usually takes a while for Beauty Bay things to arrive. Just because it's in the UK. But one day those will come. And in that order I also bought the LA Girl Shockwave liner. Whatever the ones that people always talk about. I bought the pink one because my ColourPop pink eyeliner is just really dry right now. So yeah, and then in terms of replacements, I bought, I ran out of the CoverGirl concealer that I had been using and I went back and forth, but if you've been watching my channel this month, you know that I ended up buying the Kosas Revealer Concealer. This is technically called the Revealer Super Creamy and Brightening Concealer. I have the shade 0.5N. This is also something that I newly tried this month, and I do like it. Um, it's a dewier finish. Like, it, it definitely has, like, a sh not a sheen to it, but it's a dewier finish concealer. Uh, it surprised me with the amount of coverage that it has, though. It has a very good amount of coverage. I thought it was going to be, like, super sheer, but nope. It's actually really great in terms of coverage, and... Even though I have oily skin, I have been enjoying it, and I'm really happy that I ended up trying it out just because I wanted to know what all the hype was about. And I understand completely why people with dry skin love this so much because it's a really, really beautiful finish. If you have oily skin, you can set it and it will look nice, I think, but bear in mind that it does have a dewier. A dewier finish and it's not quite as long wearing as like a matte uh, a concealer with a more matte finish I also ran out of the cleanser that I use in the morning so I bought the inky list fulvic acid brightening cleanser 
is interesting. Texturally, it's really nice. Um, I like like the texture of it and how it feels to like cleanse our face with it or whatever. There's like black specks in it, which I'm not entirely sure what that is. On the package, it says something about peat, which if you didn't know, I did my master's research in peatlands, so it has a close place in my heart, peat does. It doesn't, I don't really know what's going on with this. It does have an interesting smell that I don't particularly enjoy. This makes me realize why companies put fragrance and skincare and makeup and stuff. Um, it's not particularly like crazy amazing, but I do have been enjoying it so far and it's affordable. I also replaced the loose powder that I was using. I just replaced it with the same thing, the Maybelline Fit Me Loose Powder. I have the shade 05 Fair, it's just my favorite loose powder and it's affordable and I just didn't really feel like searching for a new one or spending a lot of money on it this month, so I replaced that. I also ran out of my Danessa Myricks Cream Bronzer, so I ended up replacing it with a new cream bronzer. I bought the e.l.f. Putty Bronzer. I have the shade Tan Lines. I believe it's the second lightest shade, and I've been really enjoying it. I've only, I have used it like a handful of times. I haven't used it like a ton a ton, but I do really enjoy it. I like the shade. I like the finish. It's not quite as dewy as the Danessa Myricks bronzer, but I think it's a really, so far, I think it's a really great affordable cream bronzer, and it has a really nice shade range as well, particularly for a drugstore bronzing product. Um, I also have been getting low on my like hydrating primer and I was at Walmart and I saw the Wet n Wild Impossible Primer and I've heard so many things about this so I ended up buying this for when my hydrating primer runs out. So not really more to say on this because I haven't actually tried it yet but I'm excited to. Um, what else? Oh, I also... So, fun fact about me, I am obsessed with lip balm. I love lip balm. I used to just buy it constantly, and for that reason, I had a whole backlog, a fucking horde of lip balm. So I went on like an unofficial lip balm no-buy because I wanted to use up all of my lip balms, and I finally finished them. So it was a very exciting day. I was like, I can buy a new lip balm. And I was making an order from off of Pharmapri online and I was going through their lip balms and I saw that they sell Florence by Mills and it was like, um, the urge just overwhelmed me to buy this lip oil. So this is the Florence by Mills Glow Ya yeah Lip Oil and almost positive this is Millie Bobby Brown's line, right? Yeah. Um... It's okay. <laughs> I don't love it. Millie, you disappointed me. I think you kind of dropped the ball on this one, my friend. Um, uh, it's, yeah, it's quite thin, so it's not sticky at all, which is a positive, I guess, for some. And it just doesn't really feel like it's doing anything for my lips. It disappears in like 30 minutes. My lips don't feel particularly hydrated after and so I have to reapply this a lot and I find myself wishing that I had a different lip balm to put on instead of this so that I feel like is the true test of not <laughs> being a good lip balm or lip oil um, so I'll use it up but wouldn't recommend this and it was like $18 I believe so far too expensive for how much it does nothing you know I also bought this Real Techniques brush when I was at Walmart. It's technically their blush brush, but it's just a little like angled brush that's pretty dense. It's not super dense, but it's pretty dense. I've been loving it for blush. It's also good for like cream bronzer. Um, I really have enjoyed this and I'm so, so happy that I bought it. It is, it's quite, it's different from like the OG Real Techniques packaging. But it's quite nice and sleek and, I don't know, I enjoy it. And it was relatively affordable. I think it was like $10 or something. So I always love Real Techniques brushes. They're so affordable and 
work so well like I never have any problems with them and they last a long time so I bought that and then I also bought an elf moisturizer because I'm almost out of the moisturizer that I'm using now which is also from elf I bought the um, holy hydration face face cream with hyaluronic acid and peptide complex um, this is still in the box because I haven't used it yet, but I will report back when I do. And then let's move on to what I tried that I haven't already gone over. Um, most of this is just from last month. So the first thing that I tried, I bought this at the end of last month, is the Fenty Beauty Kilowatt Foil Free, no, Kilowatt Freestyle Highlighter in the shade Chills. I've been lusting after this for so, so long, and I was able to get it on sale for $14 last month, and I absolutely love it. I love how, like, sheer and sparkly it is, so it just has such a beautiful finish on your cheeks as a highlighter. If you don't like glittery or sparkly, maybe the more appropriate word, if you don't like sparkly highlights, you may not like this. But I love it, and I love having a blue highlighter that I love to pair with, like, blue and green looks. Very exciting. I also, in that order, bought the Fenty Beauty Heat Gloss Balm in the shade Fenty Glow Heat. <sighs> I love this. I love this lip gloss. It's not the same shade as the original Fenty Glow, though. It's more neutral. I feel like the original Fenty Glow is more like peachy. Um, this is a little bit more peachy, not quite as, it has like more brown to it almost. It's quite stingy. It's, it is a plumping gloss, but I just love it. I love the way it makes my lips look. I love the shade of it and I've been using it non-stop this month. A fave. This is also in the category of something that I've been loving. I also tried the Maybelline Brow Fast Sculpt Gel Mascara in the shade Soft Brown. I think I had used this like once last month, so I didn't really give a big review of it, but this little guy has shocked me in how good it is. When I use this alone, it has like the hold of soap brow. It holds like no other brow gel I've ever used. It's so good. It coat like it, it, and it tints your brows, but it doesn't make them look like crunchy or anything. Like it looks like real brow hair texture, but it holds so well, unlike any other brow gel I've ever used, and it's so affordable. I've like, if you are in the market for a new brow gel and an, and an affordable brow gel, Highly, highly recommend checking this out. Highly recommend. It's really, really good. Um, oh, this was something that I newly got this month, but I didn't buy it. I got this as a point perk. This is the Youth to the People Kale and Green Tea with Spinach and Vitamin Superfood Cleanser. This is like a little sample size. Um, I wanted to try this because, I mean, everyone fucking raves about this cleanser as if no other cleanser can ever come close to being this good and I enjoyed it but I think it's really fucking overrated to be honest it's good but does it do anything that my like CeraVe foaming cleanser doesn't do no so that's my thoughts on that um I also randomly in the pharma pre-order got a Free sample of the Darfin Stimul Skin Plus Absolute Renewal Eye and Lip Contour Cream. It just came. Um, I looked it up and originally this is like $110 for like an eye cream, which is crazy, crazy. I've been using it as an eye cream and I mean, I feel like it makes my under eyes feel, look and feel good. But I wouldn't, I, that's what I would expect from a fucking eye cream that's so much money. And Darfin as a brand is so expensive. So random. <laughs> but I have it, so <laughs> this is also something that I tried this month. Um, 
do 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 okay yeah so then I also tried some palettes for the first time as well I tried the BH avocado toast this was right at the beginning of February love it as with any other BH cosmetics palette that I've tried I've loved it and I can't wait to play with it more again I've only played with it once so can't really say too too much about that but I really really enjoyed it um, I also tried the Pat McGrath Utopian Dreams palette for the first time I did a first impressions on this I will leave every video featuring the palettes like I'm, I I will leave every video that I've done like focusing on these palettes in the description box but I this is no exception to my love for Pat McGrath. I think it is absolutely stunning. Absolutely stunning. It is so good. I just love Pat McGrath's eyeshadow formula so much. And you can hear my whole thoughts in that video. I also did a get ready with me using the ColourPop Lush Life palette. I bought this for Black Friday and I used it in the get ready with me for the first time this month and again really enjoyed it. The shimmers aren't my favorite formula in the world. They're nice but the mattes in here are really really nice and I'm excited to try the other ColourPop palettes that I ended up buying at that same time. <laughs> and yes and then what I've been loving so the NYX Sweet Cheeks Glow Creamy Powder Blush in the shade Daydream I, I just I love it this has become one of my new favorite glowy blush formulas I recently posted a video all about glowy blushes which I will link in the cards and down below um, if you want to check that out but this is just the most beautiful it is quite glowy so you were warned, but if you like a dewy, glowy blush, it just looks absolutely glorious and glowy and dewy and wet on your cheeks. A++ and it's like $12. So, so good. And I've also been loving, still, my Beauty Bay palettes. Um, I continued to love on my Beauty Bay Book of Magic palette this month. I can't get enough. Um, I only used it once, I believe. I used the shade Potion down here. I just did like a blue look. So really, really been loving that. And then I ended up deciding to just set it down for a second and move on to something else. If you are interested or curious, I do have a highlight on my Instagram, at Laura Clark Makeup on Instagram. Um, taking pictures of like my makeup of the day if I don't post it on Instagram or YouTube. So if you want to know like what I wear in like the day to day, check those out and those looks are what I'm including here. And then I also have been really loving my Sunset Horizons palette this month. I have raved about this palette a lot on my channel last summer. This was like the palette of the summer for me. I really loved it and I love how bright it is and I really love the like half warm, half cool toned aspect of this. But I did a lot of different looks this month actually so far. I did a really bright like a corally look. I did an orange look and a yellow look using this mirage shade. Using this mirage shade all over the lid. I did a smokier look featuring this coconut shade down here in a Terra Moon single. I did a like bright orange look using this so I've been loving this a lot. And I've also been loving this lip combo that I'm wearing. This is a combination of the Makeup Forever Artist Color Pencil and Endless Cacao because it's the fucking best. Paired it with the ColourPop Ultra Glossy Lip in Fairy Floss because I'm just trying to like get this out of my collection. I don't love the... I don't love the like the formula of this gloss particularly much, but I do like the color, like the grayed out pinky color that um, these two products combined make. So that has also been a fave. And then finally, well, kind of. And then let's move into my hair is so frizzy. Oh my god. 
let's move into things that I've been tempted by. So the Danessa Myricks Cream Blush Palettes this month have really, especially the nude one, I don't really have many cream blushes, but the way they look tempt me so much. It's nothing that I would like immediately buy, but it's definitely on my radar. The ColourPop blushes that they released for Valentine's Day, like all of them, have been tempting me since they released. They are beautiful. They're beautiful. I want every single shade. There's something about the aesthetic of them that I also love, even though I'm not particularly into like heart-shaped things, but they're on, they're on my mind. The Glaminatrix Nocturnal Palette. Need I say more? I actually went into this intending to buy it when it launched for pre-order, but it's expensive and then you have to pay for shipping and customs from Australia and I just, it is a permanent palette in their line so I just ended up deciding not to buy it right away and maybe wait for the next time that they put their pre-order up for the palette. Um, but I didn't end up buying it, but I was str like, I strongly thought that I was going to. The Kaleidos launch this month also tempted me so much. Again, um, it's just a matter of like, you can't buy everything, <laughs> unfortunately. And again, I wanted all the blushes. The quads didn't really tempt me as much because I know that I would never realistically use quads, but the lip vault as well. <gasps> Oh my god, all of those shades are so, so beautiful. So those definitely tempted me. And then also, this is the, this blush palette I couldn't remember the name of. But then Annette's Makeup Corner did a video featuring this brand, the Risa Beauty Blush Palette. Tell me this isn't like me in a blush palette. I think it launched for Valentine's Day and it just looks so beautiful with all those bright blushes and you know how much I love blush, but it's just not something that like, again, you can't buy everything and it's just not really something that's like a priority for me to buy. Okay, I forgot to grab the books that I read this month, but I just did. So let's conclude this video by talking about some books. I tried really hard, just for no other reason other than I've been trying to read three books a month. <laughs> In the second month of the year I failed, but that's okay. Uh, but I didn't quite make it there. I almost did. So the first book that I read this month was the book was The Strangers by Katharina Vermet. I'm hopefully pronouncing her name right. This is a book that is about a First Nations family in Manitoba, which is the province that I was born and raised. It's set in Winnipeg, which is a like the capital city that I grew outside, grew up out like close outside of. Anyway, you get what I'm saying. Um, so, so it you know was in a setting that I was familiar with, and I'm really trying to make a point of reading from First Nations authors, Indigenous authors, you know, authors that basically aren't white <laughs> and straight. <laughs> you know? Anyway, I really enjoyed this book. It's like, um, it's like an intergenerational story focused, like, from different points of view, from different family members, and I think it's really, really poignant. It definitely has a lot of, like, interge intergenerational trauma and things like that, so potential trigger warnings, but there's a lot of triumph and beauty in it, in it as well, and it's just really beautifully written, and I think the way that she's able to switch her writing style between, like, character perspectives is really special, and I really, really enjoyed it a lot. I think I gave it, like, an 8 out of 10 or something on my own personal ranking. <laughs> And then I also read the book Ties That Tether by Jane Igharo. Probably didn't pronounce that right either. This is a book, it's pretty much like a, like a contemporary, reads like a young adult romance 
novel pretty much um i my girlfriend bought this and then i read it after she did it's about a nigerian woman named azere i'm probably not saying that right azere <laughs> my girlfriend tries to help me with nigerian pronunciation but uh i can never uh never nail it i'm not quite at the nailing it stage yet anyway it's just basically about her and a man that she meets and falls in love with and i don't want to give too much away but basically just like the story that unfolds i i did enjoy this it's quite like a nice little nice little read like the characters aren't particularly complex there's not a ton of character development i found them like a little bit one note and um, yeah, it, but it also, at the same time, it does deal with, like, issues of, and topics of cultural identity and immigration and how to, how, you know, <sighs> okay, my, my battery, or my camera ran out of memory, I was talking about this book, Ties That Tether, I don't know where I left off, I enjoyed it, <laughs> okay, I enjoyed it, it wasn't overwhelmingly complex, but I enjoyed it, is the, essence of my book review. And then I also started but have not yet finished the book Detransition Baby by Tori Peters. My roommate lent me this. She bought it and I am borrowing it and reading it. And I like it but I don't want to give my full thoughts on it until I finish it because you never know what's gonna happen in the last quarter of the book. Um, so yeah, just an update. I'm reading this and I will update everyone if you're at all interested <laughs> next month. Okay, and this concludes, this wraps up my wrap up or recap of February. This month has been hard for me in my personal life. <laughs> um, so makeup has definitely been like the pretty much only bright spot of my month. So hopefully, March is going to be better, you know, hopefully we actually move into spring and things get warmer and stuff like that. Um, February was not my favorite month of the year, but I'm trying to see the positive in every day, even though my cynical nature doesn't want that to happen for me. Okay, anyway, <laughs> not the point of this video. I hope everyone has a wonderful March and thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in my next one. Bye!